treatments to a new medication? Correct answer. C. Rationale, C is an appropriate task to delegate to a nursing assistant, as it involves assisting with activities of daily living and mobility exercises, which are within the scope of practice for nursing assistants. A and D involve assessment and evaluation, which require clinical judgment and must be performed by a nurse. B involves medication administration, also a task that should be performed by licensed nursing staff. Question 16, addressing patient anxiety. A patient scheduled for surgery the following day expresses increasing anxiety about the procedure. Which nursing intervention is most appropriate to address the patient's anxiety? A. Advise the patient to relax and stop worrying because the surgery is routine. B. Offer to provide information about the surgery and answer any questions the patient might have. C. Suggest the patient talk to other patients who have had the same surgery to ease their worries. D. Ignore the patient's anxiety as it is a normal response to surgery. Correct answer, B. Rationale, B is the most appropriate response as it acknowledges the patient's anxiety and offers a constructive way to alleviate it by providing information and answering questions, thereby empowering the patient with knowledge. A is dismissive and does not validate the patient's feelings. C could be helpful, but may also increase anxiety if the patient hears about negative experiences. D neglects the nurse's role in providing emotional support and education. Question 17. Maintaining patient confidentiality. A nurse is discussing patient care over the phone in a public area. Which action best maintains patient confidentiality? A. Using coded language to discuss the patient's condition. B. Moving to a private area where the conversation cannot be overheard. C. Speaking in a low voice to minimize the chance of being overheard. D. Ensuring that the patient's name is not mentioned during the conversation. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B is the best action to maintain patient confidentiality as it ensures that sensitive information is not shared in a place where it can be overheard by unauthorized individuals. A may reduce the risk, but still poses a potential breach of confidentiality. C and D are steps to minimize risk, but do not adequately safeguard against the possibility of eavesdropping. Question 18, Promoting Patient Safety Which action by the nurse demonstrates a commitment to patient safety during medication administration? A. Relying on memory for dosages because the nurse is experienced. B. Checking the patient's medication allergies each time before administering medication. C. Administering medication as soon as it is received from the pharmacy without double checking. D. Skipping the patient identification process if the nurse knows the patient well. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B demonstrates a commitment to patient safety by verifying the patient's medication allergies each time before administration, which is a critical step in preventing adverse drug reactions. A is unsafe and can lead to medication errors. C disregards the importance of double-checking medication orders, key safety protocol. D ignores a fundamental safety measure of confirming patient identity, which is essential regardless of familiarity. Question 19. Responding to a fall. A patient falls in the hallway while trying to walk without assistance. After ensuring the patient is safe and assessing for injuries, what is the nurse's next step? A. Reprimand the patient for not calling for help. B. Document the fall in the patient's health record and notify the healthcare team. C. Tell the patient that restrictions will be placed on their mobility. D. Ignore the incident to avoid causing embarrassment to the patient. Correct answer, B. Rationale, B is the correct step as it ensures that the incident is officially recorded and communicated to the healthcare team for appropriate follow-up and intervention. It also helps in identifying potential risks and implementing strategies to prevent future falls. A is inappropriate and may discourage the patient from seeking help in the future. 
C might be necessary depending on the assessment, but should be approached in a way that supports the patient's autonomy and safety. D neglects the nurse's responsibility to report and address safety incidents. Question 20. Interdisciplinary Collaboration A nurse is planning care for a patient with complex needs requiring input from multiple healthcare professionals. Which approach best demonstrates effective interdisciplinary collaboration? A. Making all the care decisions independently to expedite the process. B. Organizing a team meeting to discuss and coordinate the patient's care plan. C. Assigning tasks to team members without discussing the overall plan. D. Consulting with only the most senior doctor about the patient's care. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B is the best approach as it involves organizing a meeting with all relevant healthcare professionals to discuss and coordinate the patient's care. This ensures that everyone is informed, perspectives are shared, and the care plan is comprehensive and cohesive. A disregards the valuable input other disciplines can provide. C does not ensure that care is coordinated or that all aspects of the patient's needs are addressed. D limits the breadth of expertise and perspectives that could benefit the patient's care. Question 21. Advocating for patient rights. A patient expresses a desire not to have a specific medical treatment due to personal beliefs. The healthcare team believes the treatment is in the patient's best interest. How should the nurse act in this situation? A. Insist on the treatment, emphasizing its benefits and the risks of refusal. B. Respect the patient's decision and support them in communicating their wishes to the healthcare team. C. Avoid discussing the treatment with the patient to prevent further conflict. D. Persuade the patient by presenting the negative outcomes of not undergoing the treatment. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B is the correct action as it respects the patient's autonomy and right to make informed decisions about their own care, even if these decisions go against medical advice. The nurse should advocate for the patient's wishes and help facilitate communication between the patient and the healthcare team to ensure that all parties understand the patient's perspective. A and D could be perceived as coercive and disrespectful of the patient's rights. C neglects the nurse's role as an advocate and fails to address the potential need for alternative care plans or supportive measures. Question 22. Addressing cultural sensitivity in care. A patient's cultural beliefs include using traditional healing practices alongside conventional medical treatments. Which approach by the nurse best demonstrates cultural sensitivity? A. Discouraging the use of traditional practices as they are not evidence-based. B. Acknowledging and incorporating the patient's beliefs into the care plan where possible. C. Ignoring the patient's beliefs as irrelevant to modern medical care. D. Informing the patient that hospital policy prohibits non-medical practices. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B demonstrates cultural sensitivity by acknowledging and respecting the patient's beliefs and seeking ways to integrate them into the care plan, as long as they do not interfere with the efficacy of medical treatments or the safety of the patient. This approach promotes holistic care and patient satisfaction. A and C dismiss the importance of cultural beliefs in the patient's healing process, potentially alienating the patient. D, while potentially true in some settings, should be approached carefully, with efforts made to accommodate the patient's needs within policy limitations. Question 23. Enhancing patient education. A patient with diabetes needs to learn how to manage their condition, including diet, exercise, and glucose monitoring. Which strategy by the nurse will most effectively enhance patient education? A. Providing a comprehensive lecture on diabetes management in one session. B. Offering written materials without follow-up discussion or demonstration. C. Tailoring the education to the patient's learning style and providing hands-on demonstrations. D. Advising the patient to search for information online to learn at their own pace. Correct answer. C. 
Rationale, C is the most effective strategy, as it considers the patient's preferred learning style and includes hands-on demonstrations, which can improve understanding and retention of complex information like diabetes management. Tailoring education fosters engagement and empowerment. A may overwhelm the patient with too much information at once. B lacks interactive elements and may not address all patient questions or needs. D assumes the patient has the skills and resources to find accurate and relevant information, which may not be the case. Question 24, responding to end-of-life care preferences. A patient with a terminal illness expresses a wish to discontinue aggressive treatment and focus on palliative care. How should the nurse respond? A. Encouraging the patient to reconsider and continue treatment for the sake of their family. B. Supporting the patient's decision and working with the healthcare team to adjust the care plan. C. Telling the patient that it's too soon to give up on potentially curative treatments. D. Informing the patient about the success rates of aggressive treatments to persuade them to continue. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B respects the patient's autonomy and end-of-life care preferences, supporting their decision to focus on comfort and quality of life rather than pursuing aggressive treatments with unlikely benefits. The nurse should facilitate communication with the healthcare team to ensure the care plan reflects the patient's wishes. A, C, and D disregard the patient's expressed desires and may contribute to distress and a sense of disempowerment at a vulnerable time. Question 25, Managing Time Effectively A nurse is responsible for caring for multiple patients with varying degrees of acuity. Which strategy demonstrates effective time management? A. Completing tasks for the most cooperative patients first to maximize efficiency. B. Prioritizing tasks based on patient acuity and the urgency of care needs. C. Allocating equal time to each patient, regardless of their current condition. D. Delegating all non-nursing tasks to unlicensed assistive personnel to focus on documentation. Correct answer. B. Rationale. B is the most effective time management strategy, ensuring that patients with the highest acuity and most urgent care needs are attended to first. This approach maximizes patient safety and care quality by prioritizing based on clinical need rather than convenience or non-clinical factors. A may neglect the needs of less cooperative or more critically ill patients. C does not account for the varying needs of patients and may lead to inefficient care delivery.